Well, the scale of the scientific achievement is truly unprecedented. What has happened, and it is really the result of the spectacular advances in technological capability to develop vaccine platforms in a way that have us being able to do things in weeks to months that literally would have taken a decade ago years and years to do. And it has nothing to do with compromising scientific integrity or compromising safety of volunteers in a vaccine trial. It's just that in extraordinary advances in technologies that actually have taken place over years and years, but finally culminated in the technology that has allowed us to go from identifying a virus in January of 2020, and then less than one year later, to actually have vaccine doses ready to go into people, as you will soon be doing in the UK. So it just is something that is totally unprecedented. Well, you mentioned races and the, the race to develop a vaccine. Now, as you also touch on there, there's a race to get one approved. And it seems the UK has won that race in terms of its being the first country uh, in the world to approve a vaccine that's passed its third stage of clinical trials. Do you think that is because the UK has been more agile than, for instance, the United States? Or is it premature? You know, I think it's very important for people to realise that there are different levels of uh, stringency and scrutiny upon which you look at the data. The, the FDA in the United States, I think everyone realizes globally, is the gold standard of regulatory uh, function. Where here in the United States, as I'm sure is somewhat in the UK, there is this degree of skepticism on the part of the people about wanting to take a vaccine, thinking that perhaps it was done too quickly, Perhaps it isn't as safe and effective as we say they are. So we put the data through a very, very stringent process of literally point by point analyzing the data. The UK has decided to do it a little bit differently. They've gone over it very quickly. And I can say, and this is not a criticism, but they've done it in a way that has much less deep than has been done and is being done by the FDA in the United States. In fact, I, I, as, as I hear from the news, other members, uh, uh, people in the European Union have actually criticized the UK for going so quickly. I don't want to get into criticism or who's right or who's wrong. It's just a different degree of scrutiny. Our examination of the data will be complete very likely in a week and a half. So we will likely have the Pfizer data ready to go for an EUA, which is an emergency use authorization, by the 11th of uh, December, the Moderna product likely by the 18th of December. So we don't look upon it as a race of who won the race. The product is there, the trial was done, the data look really good, quite efficacious, and I believe quite safe. And it's just a matter of what kind of scrutiny each country's regulatory agency puts the data through. That's all that really is. But it is an important point you make about um, the speed, because, of course, as you're going to tell me later, I'm sure it is important that uh, when the vaccine becomes widely available, that as many people as possible take it. And there is, as you touch on there, a degree of vaccine scepticism in some countries, quite a large degree of that. And if the regulatory process is seen to be or thought to be too quick. Are you saying it might feed into that skepticism? Yes, uh, absolutely. And that's one of the things we're really concerned about because we have here and the UK will benefit it from it the way all of the world will. We have a couple of highly efficacious vaccines, but the effectiveness of a vaccine program is only as good as the number of people who actually get vaccinated. And when we did a survey here in the United States, there was a considerable degree of skepticism and reluctance to get vaccinated. And we were concerned that if we did anything that looked like it was cutting corners, that would feed into the skepticism and we might have the effect, which would really be the opposite of what we want, namely that less people would want to get vaccinated. So we want to put it through the process. That's the standard process. We're hurrying it up a bit, but not nearly as quickly as you did in the UK, which we believe if we had done that here in the United States, it would have been to our disadvantage 
because it would have generated a lot of skepticism about the speed with which it was approved. And can I just put you your contention, Dr. Fauci, that the FDA, the Food and Drugs Administration, is the gold standard of regulatory authorities? It's not what the British government thinks. You may be aware that a British government minister sits in the cabinet alongside Prime Minister Boris Johnson, said the reason why the UK was able to approve this vaccine, because it's got the best medical regulators, much better <laughs> than the Americans, because it's a much better country. Yeah, well, OK. Uh, let me start off by saying I love all you people in the UK. <laughs> I have so many friends there, but I don't want to get into that who won what race first. That uh, This is a serious enough thing that we've all got to pull together on this and not look like we're trying to outcompete each other. OK, uh, well, can I ask you about other vaccines coming down the track? And this one does have a, a big British stamp on it, and it's the AstraZeneca Oxford efforts. Um, and it's a different route of developing the vaccines, a more traditional one, an adenovirus, as I understand it, as opposed to the mRNA ones we've been talking about. Do you think that it has the potential to be, to be less effective? You know, we don't know until you try it. I, I believe that of all of the vaccines that are being tried, the United States is involved in supporting directly and indirectly six of these. One of them is the AstraZeneca a uh, candidate that is being tested right now as we speak here in the United States. I believe that given the high degree of efficacy that we have seen with the mRNA, and I hope and believe that we will see a comparable efficacy with the other candidates, but it remains to be seen. When you're dealing with the development of vaccines, the proof of the pudding is gonna be the result of the clinical trial. So when the results of the clinical trial come out, then we'll be able to see just how comparable these results will be. But there are some suggestions that uh, some of the big pharmaceutical companies that have developed other uh, vaccines like Pfizer, we've been discussing Moderna and others, don't like the AstraZeneca effort because it's so cheap and might undercut them. No, I don't think that's the case. Uh, we just want as many vaccines as we possibly can. We are going to need all of the involved companies to finish and go to the finish line and be a winner. There's not just one winner here. There are multiple ones, because if you look at all of the demands of vaccines for the world, and this is a global problem that has to be addressed as a global problem. So we'll need each and every company that has an efficacious vaccine to be in the mix, putting out vaccine doses that people can use. So I don't think it's, a, it's an example of one company not wanting another company to succeed. Everybody needs to succeed in order for us to get this under control. Dr. Fauci, tell me how bad the situation is with COVID-19 in the United States. Do you wake up each morning hoping against hope that you'll see some better figures, yet time after time they confound you and they just seem to get worse? 100,000 Americans now occupying hospital beds. Right. It's a very difficult situation here in the United States, literally and unfortunately. Every day, we seem to break a record, either for number of cases in a day, it goes over 200,000, number of deaths, well over 2,000, close to 3,000 a day. And as you said correctly, 100,000 hospitalizations. And it's going to get worse, unfortunately, because we are now in the beginning of December, we're going to see a surge, almost certainly related to the travel and the congregating during our Thanksgiving holiday. We'll see the result of that two to three weeks following Thanksgiving, which will put us right before the Christmas holiday and the Hanukkah holiday. And what we'll see now is even more infections as people travel for Christmas and Hanukkah, congregate in dinners and social settings. We're in for a cold, long winter Unfortunately, we can do something about it, I believe, if we uniformly adhere to public health measures like uniform wearing of masks, avoiding close contact, avoiding crowds, particularly indoor congregate settings. If we all did that universally, we could blunt what we're seeing is a very steep surge of cases. OK, and I'm going to ask you why that's happening and uh, adding into what you're talking about, the, the holiday season there, I'm reading something like 20 festive season parties planned in and around the White House. And that question is, does it have to be this way or would better leadership have left the United States in a better position going into the winter? 
Well, I mean, I've said it many, many times. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are, what your position is. When you have large numbers of people congregating indoors, usually without masks, that is a very high risk situation that almost inevitably will lead to a surge in numbers of infections. But I'm talking about President Trump, who yesterday I noticed tweeted about nine times on the day that, as you've been telling us, uh, a record number of deaths were reported in the United States from COVID-19. The president's still tweeting about losing an election through fraud. Well, I'm not going to comment about anything that has to do with the president, because then that becomes a soundbite, which is not helpful to what I really want to do, is to stop infections from spreading throughout the United States and the world. But I want to talk about your ability to influence how the United States handles COVID-19. Are you going to get involved? We understand you're having meetings today or may have had meetings with the, the Joe Biden transition team. Yes, I will. This afternoon, we'll be talking about some of the transition things that we'd like to see happen so we could have a smooth transition from one administration to another. Uh, and uh, in between time, you don't expect uh, the current president to fire you, as we heard his supporters chanting just before the election. Uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I have a pretty good relationship with the president, so I don't anticipate that happening.